Hello, good morning. Welcome to the presentation about uh, batch processing pipeline of machine to the uh, My name is Martin Bachowski. I work for Red Hat. I work in Connected Customer Experience Team. And I would like to share with you how we process uh, data from OpenShift in OpenShift. So, first, first of all, uh, what we do. Uh, OpenShift clusters that are uh, uh, subscribed to the uh, Insights program send some health data to Red Hat. Then it is processed and uh, analyzed and the results are returned back to the uh, customers in form of some uh, recommendations on how to uh, fix or uh, update their environments to prevent or fix issues that they might be experiencing. Also use the data internally, uh, process them further and we use them for example in uh, OpenShift engineering uh, to improve the product or also we use uh, the data in various support groups uh, to help uh, customers uh, to fix their problems uh, more uh, efficiently. Uh, I will talk uh, just about the processing uh, for the internal use. Uh, the rest of the whole process, uh, which is uh, basically owned by uh, the Connected ex uh, Customer Experience Team. Uh, if you are interested in the other parts, uh, you might visit other talks by my uh, co colleagues on this conference and uh, you'll definitely learn more about the, the whole, whole uh, process and the whole setup. Uh, while this is talk about data processing, I'd also like to introduce uh, our data. So on uh, Ingress we get uh, the health data from the clusters. We get about 250,000 uh, uh, archives per day. The archives are basically a tarball of some files, mostly files. <coughs> and we receive those on Ingress, and then we process that, and the results are stored in our data lake, where we have more than 100 tables, and we produce more than one mil 100 millions of rows every day. It's actually a lot more because we process some data multiple times, but yeah, you get like the rough understanding of, of the amount of data that we deal with. Uh, also, besides the uh, data lake, data that are used for further analysis, uh, we also have uh, some dashboards that we develop and maintain where we surface the data for uh, various groups uh, within Red Hat uh, and we try to uh, provide the data in, in some uh, comprehensive way so that they can use it right, right away. Okay, so this is time for my questions. So I would like to ask first who has some or has no experience with uh, data processing or pipelines. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anybody use Tecton in there? Uh, okay, yes. and so, yeah, so, thank you. And the last question is, uh, is there any uh, Tecton contributor in here? Somebody who develops Tecton? Okay. Thank you. So let's let's go on uh, the mandatory agenda. Uh, I don't want to cover uh, the basic things that are uh, covered by the usual tutorials. I would like to focus more on the things that are often not mentioned in the tutorials, and that's how you should structure your uh, pipeline and tasks so that is uh, easy to maintain and uh, sustainable for a day-to-day -day business. So we'll cover some basic topics that will be needed for the talk. We also take some some information about Tecton and the rest of the uh, talk will be uh, what we do to uh, build uh, sustainable pipelines uh, for uh, the, the job that we do. Okay, so the first thing that should be clarified is uh, the kinds of pipelines. So there are two basic types of uh, data processing pipelines and 
as I will be talking uh, for uh, just about the batch pipelines, I would like to explain the difference uh, between the two approaches. So uh, there are streaming pipelines where the strategy is that it's built around messaging. Uh, there are some workers that are running uh, as, as a like for, for the whole time, they are listening in the uh, messaging queues and the processing of the data is triggered by the incoming data, uh, the incoming message. Uh, basically the workers usually process single entity at a time, they don't see the, the bigger scope and uh, the, the messaging is uh, what glues the workers uh, together. Basically the workers take, take the message, process it and the result goes to another queue or a storage somewhere. Uh, this, is, this is great architecture for real-time processing, usually on the ingress of data where, 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 where you have uh, the data income <coughs> and you need to process as it comes. This is, this is the right architecture for region. Uh, the second, uh, second type of uh, pipelines that's the one that we'll talk about and that's the one that we use for the data processing in uh, my team is uh, batch pipelines. The architecture is a bit different. Uh, it's built around uh, pipeline manager uh, which has basically description of the pipelines. Pipeline is series uh, of tasks that have some defined order of execution and the pipeline manager knows how to process uh, in which order and how to how to process the, the tasks. Uh, the pipeline is uh, triggered usually by some event. Often it is uh, time-based. For example, we use uh, scheduled, scheduled runs of pipelines. And the task uh, inside the pipeline runs just for the time when it uh, processes the data. Uh, so the, the pipeline manager then shuts down the task and uh, runs something else. Uh, the task have access to the <coughs> To the data lake and usually process the data sets as a whole. They uh, they are this is this is great art architecture when you need to uh, process data, do some aggregations, <coughs> build reports in like multiple steps. So this is this is uh, what you should use. So a bit more about uh, pipeline managers. Uh, Pipeline manager is basically the heart of the batch processing pipeline and its job is to uh, manage the tasks run in the right order, to solve the concurrency between the tasks uh, uh, and so on. Uh, there is really a lot of, lot of solution on the market. There is uh, plenty of uh, solutions that are open source and they differ in, in many things. They differ in platforms uh, which they integrate with. They uh, differ in the complexity of the tool. Some, some of the managers are really lightweight and just orchestrate the, the pipeline description. <coughs> some are really complex and uh, are the full framework that helps you with creating uh, the, the pipelines often visually and, and so on. So, on the, on the bottom side, there is a list of some uh, well-known uh, pipeline managers. Uh, the, the most often used are uh, Airflow, uh, Argo CD or Argo Workflows, Tecton, Jenkins, you probably know some, some of these. Okay, so why <coughs> I will uh, talk about Tecton? Uh, so as a, as a data engineer, you usually don't have the choice uh, of your tools for two reasons. One is that uh, when you are processing uh, big data, uh, the tooling is expensive to maintain and companies usually have some tools already uh, hosted or bought or there are some available solutions. So you basically pick what there is. Uh, available uh, in, in your environment. The second reason is uh, that the other option would be to run the tools on your own and data engineers usually don't have the skills to run uh, like such complex tools uh, in production quality and they also don't have the time because uh, 
they focus on, on the data of, on, on the on the tools. And that's that's a situation uh, where where we are. We currently operate our pipelines on Argo workflows, uh, and it's a self-maintained uh, uh, system. It was not easy to set up with our with our uh, skill set that we have in the team, but it works just fine. Now we are in a challenge that we need to replicate our uh, environment to multiple namespaces, namespaces uh, in the cluster. And it's not trivial to uh, set up uh, for us the, and maintain multiple Argo instances. At the same time, we noticed that in the namespaces that we use in the OpenShift cluster, we have uh, OpenShift pipelines, uh, for instance. OpenShift pipelines is basically branded Tecton uh, provided with OpenShift. So we were thinking if, um, if Tecton could be the tool that we switch to because it's uh, provided to us and it's, it's maintained by somebody else. And uh, that could be a solution for a problem with, with the uh, workflow manager. So uh, a, bit, a few facts about uh, Tecton. <coughs> Tecton is <coughs> Kubernetes native. That's that's the most important. We want uh, the the manager to be stable and run smoothly in the OpenShift environment. So this is uh, this is uh, satisfied. It's open source. That that's great. Uh, that there is also uh, well established uh, open source community because the Tecton project is there since 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So there is a lot of experience, the project has excellent documentation, so uh, it's, it's uh, easy to get started, it's, it's, not, it's not very complex, and um, yeah, it looks like it should be the job, uh, uh, the tool for, for the job. Uh, just to uh, clarify the, the vocabulary that's used in Tecton, uh, they have pipelines, which is the, the, the pipeline. Uh, it's composed of tasks. Uh, every task <coughs> runs to an OpenShift port. So what's what task runs on single single port in, in the cluster? That's that's uh, important to understand. And the tasks are composed of steps, and every step is mapped to a container. So you can have multiple containers within the port, and you can. Uh, define your tasks uh, with this kind of uh, structure. What we 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 were uh, looking for the common use cases for Tecton on the internet, and they they present themselves as a solution for CI/CD. So CI/CD pipelines are uh, the <coughs> most common pipelines run with, with the tool. Uh, the 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 uh, above diagram is uh, basically typical typical structure of CI/CD pipeline. Often, Tecton is also used for machine learning for the training of the models, and that's that's the bottom diagram. That that's usually linear one one task after another. The question that was ahead of us if was if Tecton would work uh, with our pipelines. So this is. Uh, Basically, our uh, daily pipeline, not, not the whole one, it's, it's just part of it, but you can get the idea of how, how complex it is compared to the usual uh, CI CD pipeline. So, we were wondering uh, because running the pipeline is one thing, but running it on a day to day basis with all the things that are around might be a big challenge for the tool. So, um, we identified uh, some key areas where we want to do some experiments to basically understand if uh, Tecton will make it with our pipelines. So these are the areas that we that we identified and then we that we wanted to cover in our um, spikes or experiments. And uh, this is a spoiler because the colors shows uh, how it went. So the green ones. Uh, went fine. We we solved uh, what, what we wanted, and the orange ones uh, worked as well, but with, with some compromises and uh, with some workarounds. The red ones 
It's uh, not a blocker, but it needs some more un understanding and testing. Uh, so uh, if I go from the top, uh, the time-based execution, it's, it's not typical for CI-CD pipelines to be triggered by a cron job. Uh, there is some bit complex way how to do that, but it's possible with, with the Tekton tools. You can define uh, some event listener and there are some mechanism of triggers where you can transform the parameters uh, and send it to the pipeline. So we, in the end, run the pipelines with uh, curl command in a cron job. And it, it sends just uh, events to the event listener and the pipeline triggers. So, so that works. Uh, we were um, uh, wondering how the log observability in the uh, in the tool will be because the amount of tasks is huge and if you want to quickly navigate to some task that, that is causing some issues it might not be easy. We were, it was surprisingly easy. The Tekton has excellent CLI. It, it's really, it's really uh, easy to use and the output is uh, sometimes more comprehensive than the UI. And the UI is well interact, uh, integrated in, into the OpenShift uh, console. So you have everything at hand and uh, <coughs> the user experience is really well. It's quite easy to navigate even the complex pipelines and the structure inside. The third thing that, that we uh, investigated was performance. Uh, we found out that the performance is really comparable with the Argo workflows that we are using now and there were not any like, significant uh, differences. So this is also uh, something that uh, we don't have to worry about. Uh, before I uh, jump to the uh, orange uh, section, uh, I would like to share how we structure our tasks because it's important uh, for uh, some of the workarounds that, that we had to do uh, to uh, bypass the limitations of the <coughs> that we hit. And I, I need to stress out that the limitations that we found are not like Tekton fault or something, but it's just that we are not using uh, Tekton for what it is uh, intended. So we are a bit stretching the, uh, the, the features of, of the Tekton in direction that was not intended. So this is our best practices for, for the tasks. Uh, and uh, this, this is uh, basically developed uh, over the time that we uh, run the pipelines and this proved to be a like, useful set of rules when you designing uh, tasks. So uh, from the top, the task, and that's, that's really important, the task needs to be inputted. That means that when you run the task multiple times on the same data, you need to end up with the same results in, in the data lake or, or uh, in the databases in the end. That's important because often you need to rerun the pipeline. For example, you were missing some data, something changed, and you need to rerun the whole processing, and you don't want your data to be screwed by, by this operation. So this is, this is really important part for the sustainability of the pipelines. Next one is uh, ability to run for past days. We need to deal with the historical data because we, did, we do some time analysis of the data. So we need to have the, the tasks to understand uh, the date for which they are run. It's also important especially for backfills of the data or when there are outages and we, we need to uh, add the missing data to the history. This is, this is also, also a key feature. Single responsibility, this is very useful. In our case, it means that one task equals to one table in the data lake. Uh, we, it's, it's, uh, it's not good uh, practice to do more things in a task because then it gets more complex when you want to handle uh, your tasks uh, like in a general way. For example, when you want to uh, generate the pipelines, the, the task needs to be as uniform as uh, possible. For the same reason, uh, no data sharing between tasks. That means that the task can only take data from external source or the data lake and store the data to the data lake. 
uh, no exceptions allowed to uh, store the data to some temporary storage that's mounted to the to the port and remounted somewhere else. Uh, these these hacks will screw your pipelines very easily. The the last two uh, practices are uh, well from from program programmer's perspective, it's probably not the great practice, but from the uh, maintenance of the task or the, the pipeline code, it proved to be uh, practical. Uh, and it's it's about organization of the of the code. We have our task defined in Python, and uh, one task is one class, and it includes uh, all the metadata that are needed for building documentation, for uh, building the pipeline definitions, uh, and uh, basically for um, uh, navigating in the tests, let's say. So the, the logic is bundled together with the metadata, it's in one file. If you need to change something, you have the exact place where to look. It's also easy then to do some uh, uh, reviews uh, on the merge requests because you can easily uh, see that there is nothing left. Because before when we had the, the thing split, it happened that, for example, the, the documentation uh, went updated and or the metadata were not matching. So this, this, this worked for us. Uh, yeah, and obvious, uh, the, the execute method of, of the task class needs to be unified so that you can uh, operate with the task uh, generally. If, if this is satisfied, you can easily work with the list of tasks and use them for uh, multiple purposes. So, for example, building the documentation, building the graphs for the pipelines, and, and so on. So, if, if all the tasks are uniform, uh, it's, it's easy. <coughs> so, now let's, let's jump to the orange part. Where are the, the, the challenges? So, first one was uh, uh, loop support. In, in uh, Argo uh, templates, which we are using now, we are using the loops quite heavily. Uh, you, can, you can imagine a set of tasks that you, you need to run multiple times with different parameters. Uh, that's that's uh, for what the loops are, and there is no such thing in the Tecton. Uh, this is uh, often used uh, when we parallelize Parallelize uh, some processing of, of the big data sets. We split them into smaller parts and run, run them in parallel. Also, it's used in backfills uh, where we tend to uh, loop over the dates and run the whole pipelines for, for every day. So this is like essential uh, feature and it was the most challenging part of, of the experiments because it forced us to uh, change the strategy how we how we build the pipelines. So the, the solution that we found was that we now define, we created our own model for the pipeline and we build the pipeline in the model and then we have some, let's say, compiler that can transform the, the Python definition of the pipeline into the YAML that's uh, understand, understanding, understand it by, by the Tecton. Uh, during the transformation, we basically expand the, the loop and render all, all the iterations uh, explicitly in, in the YAML. The downside of this solution is that we can't have uh, uh, dynamic iterations. We can't we, can't, we, we need to set the amount of iterations before the pipeline is run. That's, that can be limitations for some use cases. In our pipelines, it could be, this pattern could be avoided, so it's, it's no longer for us. But this is, this is the probably biggest, uh, biggest limitation of, of the technology that we found. Uh, there is something called metrics, that is a new uh, feature in alpha stage in Tecton that somehow could uh, fix the problem, but it's not uh, in production and it's not in uh, uh, OpenShift pipelines yet. So, the next one, backfills. This is, this is the 
most complex era because if you imagine the backfill as a huge pipeline when you have a pipeline run for every day, you can, you can easily get to a huge pipeline that has thousands of tasks. This is real challenge for the uh, environment that you run in because it's really uh, dependent, de uh, demanding on the resources and also it's a challenge for the tool because you, you stretch it to the limits. So uh, the, the uh, limitations of Tecton that we hit in this area was uh, loop support, we already discussed that. There is no pipeline nesting, that means that the pipeline could be composed of other pipelines. Uh, that's difficult for defining the pipelines, but uh, we overcome this with, with our uh, Python model, where, you, where we allow this, and then we have some transformation code that again expands the pipeline uh, into the um, expanded view where everything is explicitly set. So the, the transformation of the uh, of the natural model uh, will do, do the work uh, for the tech uh, Another limitation is uh, default time limit in Tecton. Basically Tecton tends to by default kill every pipeline after one hour of running. That's not very practical for the backfills because they often run like several hours. Uh, and we found out that this limit can be override only when the pipeline is triggered from the command line. So that, that basically ruled rule out the uh, possibility to run the backfills from the UI. Uh, we usually run the backfills from the CLI anyway, so again, no blocker, but it's something to be aware of. Uh, what was problem is uh, control over garbage collector uh, garbage collection of the finished pots. Uh, in the OpenShift namespaces, there is a quota on how many pots it, you could uh, consume, and it includes also the finished pots that are no, no longer running. And you easily exceed these quotas with, with the backfills because yeah, we are talking about thousands of pots that needs to be created. So. Uh, yeah, and also we need, uh, because a Tecton has some kind of garbage collection, uh, but you need to have uh, cluster level uh, permissions, which we don't, uh, and it doesn't have uh, the granularity that we need. We usually have uh, task that finish successfully removed in short time, and task that fails, we keep them for 24 hours. Basically, so they can be reviewed and uh, altered by, by the person who has the watch duty over the pipeline. So, uh, we ended up with uh, our own solution. We created a simple script that does the, the finished task cleanup and we run it in cron job like every hour or something so that it removes the un unwanted task from, from the space and frees the resources. Okay, red price. That's the only red one. We didn't find out any uh, workaround for that. Uh, red price are useful when you are processing data from uh, external sources. And uh, the, when there are some, I don't know, outages in the sources, for example, restarts of services and so on, you don't want to kill all your pipelines because of this. So it's useful when you have on the task to define some re retry interval with some delay and you try again for three times or so and <coughs> if it fails for the three times the, the whole pipeline uh, fail. Uh, Tecton doesn't allow us to set the delay. It is, it is important because you need to give some time uh, pre -re retry because you, you need something to change in, in the environment that you depend on. So this is, uh, basically we need more testing to see uh, if it affects uh, how, how, we, how we operate the pipelines on a daily basis. Uh, setting, uh, setting limits on memory and force. Uh, this is also important because some of our tasks have more than 
20 gigabytes of memory required for processing of the data. So we need to carefully uh, define the limits for every task so that they can fit in the environment. We have in total like 64 gigabytes of memory, so it's, it's difficult to squeeze in everything. So uh, this, this is important uh, feature for us. Uh, Tecton supports that. Uh, the only issue is that uh, the uh, limits cannot be pass, passed as a parameter to the task. So you, you can't have like gen general generic tasks that you reuse in multiple places uh, where you would want to uh, change the, the memory limits, for example. Uh, this, this was solved again by our model and we uh, define every task uh, in, in the pipeline specific and we have no reusable tasks. We, uh, we would have to ditch this, this pattern in the pipeline. And the last one is day-to-day uh, -day pipeline and link. We were wondering how the person that uh, cares about the pipelines uh, would have difficult life when they want to uh, watch all that uh, have, that's, that's happening. So the limitations that we found um, uh, were these. Uh, so uh, the long-running uh, pipelines from UI, we already discussed that. Garbage collection also was touched. Uh, yeah, it's not possible to pause pipeline execution. Sometimes it's important to pause some, some uh, pipeline that's uh, uh, resources hungry to uh, leave some room for the other one that's more important to finish in time. So this is, this is not possible. And it was resolved by a simple script that basically uh, if you stop the task, uh, it will uh, stay for a while in, in the Tecton. So we have script that uh, basically produce new pipeline that contains only the tasks that were not run in the previous run. So that would be work around this way. It's a bit creepy, but yeah, sort of works. Uh, smart reprise of a failed pipeline, that's a uh, similar thing. If pipeline fails somewhere in the middle, you fix the problem and you want to rerun it again. Uh, it's not possible with Tecton. You need to run the whole pipeline, which is wasting of resources. So again, we use the same script to uh, create a new pipeline that contains only the stuff that didn't run in the previous run. So, we found solution for these problems and it seems that it could be working. Uh, what I wanted to uh, stress out that uh, we were quite surprised by uh, the user experience of Tecton with these huge pipelines. It's easy to navigate in, in the UI, it's easy to uh, realize what's running, what's failing, uh, in which state the, the pipelines are, and uh, it's easy to navigate in the running tasks that have uh, plenty of, of tasks. Uh, and to find what you need. So that's that's basically it about uh, our experiments. And uh, now we are at the stage when we need where we need uh, to evaluate uh, our findings and decide if we want to switch to the Tecton or not. So if we if we decide to switch, the next step will be only to create uh, some hopefully open source project where we bundle all the uh, workarounds and hacks uh, in, in one place and we would like uh, this project to serve as a boilerplate for anybody who wants to uh, create copy of uh, our environment within let's say one day to be able to easy start. So, so we want to put the uh, scripts uh, or the, the workarounds in there along with the documentation and some uh, follow, follow guides uh, how to how to set everything up. So that's our plan. That's it for my talk. Thank you. And now it's some time for your questions. We have, I guess, a couple of minutes. Okay. Um, I'm curious if uh, you've given this feedback to them because they, the software seems to be useful. Mm -hmm. But uh, all the limitations you mentioned are things that I would actually expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. We, we, uh, did I already hear the, the question? Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah, question was if we gave the feedback to the Tecton, uh, Tecton community. So we didn't do it yet, 
though most of the limitations that we found are already uh, known and discussed in the uh, Tecton community, in the forums there are some solutions or discussions in progress, so we didn't find anything like extra new that would need uh, this, uh, this attention. Okay. Or maybe more ambitious, are you considered contributing to Tikton or to others maybe some of those limitations that you speak? Yeah, that's, that, that might be an option if yeah. we decide to go with Tekton. We might join the community and try to uh, affect what features have priority and, you, and might, so on. you may want to repeat the question next time. Ah, okay. So, did everybody hear that? Yeah, it's, it's for the stream, you know. Ah, okay. So, so, so the, the question is if, if we uh, were considering uh, joining the, the Tecton community. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I think we took the similar journey as you do right now uh, a couple of years ago uh, when we took one of our services, like traditional service, and uh, moved it into Tecton. And one thing that was a challenge uh, was how to properly test the task pipeline integrity and so on. So uh, have you done any research in this area as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the question was uh, how, how we do uh, testing of, uh, of uh, the pipelines and the tasks. So we have the, the tasks, they are defined in Python, uh, Python so it's easy to uh, do testing for that and we have them quite well covered. Uh, some are, some are even uh, like test driven developed, so the coverage is good. The problem is with the whole whole pipeline. There we trust to to the Tecton that it's able to uh, process uh, the the prescription as as is defined, and will probably yeah, and will probably add uh, tests for the transformation of the model of the pipeline to the Tecton code. So that, that's probably the, uh, uh, the area where some issues can happen. So we'll have to cover that with this, with this one. Okay, so I think that's it because we are out of time. Thank you for your attention and see you next time. Thank you.